So we've finally top delivery of one of the cheapest Volkswagen Polo R lines in the country. Hopefully the damage isn't that bad and it's not going to cost an absolute fortune to put right. I'm doing a full price breakdown on this car from start to finish on everything I spend on it. So let's just get straight into it. Today is part two of the Volkswagen R. Now I've got a few parts there ready to go but I am struggling to find bits for this car. There's plenty of non-genuine white wings uh, on eBay and things like that, but trying to find them in color, genuine parts, is an absolute nightmare. Trying to find an R-line bumper, practically impossible, especially in color. Unless you want to pay 700 pound for one, not happening. So, parts for this car are really scarce. I know it's a Volkswagen Polo, but in color, is an actual, actual mission to try and find. As you can see, got a brand new lower arm in a tie rod out the track rod end I've managed to get the correct uh, locking wheel nut hopefully this is what was left in the car the cord there and I've basically gone and matched the same cord on the back of the packet for a new set we'll hopefully that locking wheel nut will fit and hopefully we can get the wheels off because obviously this wheel is the one that's the worst damage and the suspension is back so hopefully all the suspension components on there we'll move we'll get it back into position i'm not too bothered about the discs and pads or anything like that at the moment we will be doing all that later on in this video we're looking to get this car into a, a moving position with all four new wheels on and the suspension done you can tell that this way this door is not this right color and this is out of spray as well because this isn't the right color so it's been blended in so whatever's happened they've had some sort of work to it previously but we'll have it looking half decent I'm going to be doing obviously the wheels outside because the Audi S1 is in the garage. Uh, I'm in the process of changing the clutch on this. So there is going to be a video on it. It's a long process. Just show you quickly. The exhaust is off it. That was hard work in itself. I'm in the middle of taking the prop shaft off. I've already taken the drive shafts out on the front. But I've got to strip down all the top and do a few other bits, but it's just hard work. Because there's very little room under there. Obviously, I want to crack on with this one so I can get it. So we can flip it. So a lot of this can be done where it is. So I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm hoping that's gonna fit. So, fingers crossed, guys. Yes! You also may notice in the Audi video you will see more. I bought a new impact wrench. This is over a thousand Newton meters of torque. Uh, the reason why I've gone for a Makita is not because. I like the make is because my work um, batteries fit it and these are Makita 5 amp so that's one of the reasons why but I've already used this on the Audi S1 it absolutely blasted the suspension so this shouldn't take long to do this so let's see how good this is on these wheel nuts doesn't disappoint I tell you what so much better than a little roby thing I had. Don't get me wrong, for starting out that was fine, but this now is a game changer. I so wish I had one of these sooner. Ah. Well happy, as you can tell. Like I said, I'm not bothered about the make. It's just the fact that it fits the batteries that I needed. And I bought this from Screwfix. So, and it was, I think it was £240, which is a hell of a lot of money, don't get me wrong, it's a hell of a lot of money, but I find this is going to be an investment for the channel, because if I can get these wheels off, like that, then, easy. Ah, I don't know if you can see that on camera, where it's been rubbing that arch, 
signal the set of the tread away. And obviously this one is so badly damaged. We suspect it's suspension damage and obviously we know quite we know wrong. Um, I'm gonna have to get some new discs and pads because these are uh, got a hell of a lip on them and the pads are practically non-existent so doesn't help when driving a car like this. Probably hence why they've had an accident in the first place. Straight away the wheel arch liners are missing. There's no damage, it's just rub marks on this metal. Uh, we knew the sill and had a little wall up, but it's literally pushed up. So that can be pulled back down and it's it's literally thin metal, so that just needs to be pulled back into shape. The actual wing bracket isn't broken, just need to tap that down. So that's fine. The sill itself, um, skirt, it's damaged on the end, which is a shame. So I'm gonna have to look out to see how that goes back. Yeah, it's split there, looks like. So we might need a new skirt for it. So we're gonna need to remove this arch liner because this is gone. The inner tie rod, which I've already got, or track rod, it's all damaged. So bent there. And I should imagine that lower arm is bent. But what I didn't know, just look in there, the CV boot is damaged. So it might be a case of just replacing the boot or I'll just get a new drive shaft. It depends on how, sh how bad that is. It might be damaged. The suspension looks fine. It's not broken. I should imagine it's not damaged. <laughs> when I take it for wheel alignment, if they pick up on it and the way you sit, if it is bent, obviously I'll just replace the old leg. But it's literally, I think this has just been pushed back and then it's just a case of lining it all back up. Putting a new one on boof job done so i think the first things first i'm not going to bother with this cv boot just yet i just want to get the car moving for today and then like i said it's a case of finding out what's wrong and what to replace and chuck some wd-40 on it to soak it up while i'm taking the arch liner out Not broken it's just a the seal is broke on it so I think rather than trying to get a new drive shaft I think we can just replace the rubber and the brackets are holding in place the clips that's not a problem I think we can sort that and repack it full of grease the reason why I've taken the drive shaft out is because if you look there you got the ball joint in place the only way to get to that is removing the drive shaft out of the way so you can get to that that's a nightmare to get out because if you round that nut off inside, it just turns. So they are really difficult to get off. That lower arm is out. That is definitely bent. Oh, I've used this many a time to get the uh, inner tie rod off or track rod. It basically clips over the bolt, tighten it up and then put your extension through there and then twist it off. Okay, so that's it on on there. But look, now this is really loose, so this is desperate for change anyway. It's on there, I put the extension through there and then twist off. Out she comes. Cracking little tool. Just slips over there like that and undoes it every time. Well happy with that. I weren't going to change this because it looks pretty new but I thought, you know what, I've already bought it I'll just replace it anyway right, There's all the damaged components suspension parts I'll just put this one here for you to reference You can quite clearly see 
how bad that is. It's twisted right over. You know, I could have left that, but it comes with a new ball joint, so makes sense. And I've already bought this, so I could take it back and save what 20 quid, but peace of mind they're knowing that this has been changed and it's all gonna be right for the next person who's gonna buy the car. I always like to make sure I put a little bit of grease on things just to help when screwing things down. It's not gonna hurt. Right, that front wheel is more or less straight on the other side and the steering wheel is in line centre. So I'm just going to get this all in line and just roughly put this in place. It's all going to be wheel aligned. It's all done. It looks well tidy now. I'm happy with that. So just tighten this hub up. Everything. The cover for the steering rack needs um, a clip on it. I need to clip that in place. I'm going to have to get one of them and we're going to have to dry, do the CV boot on there. So, this is only temporary, but this is only to get the car moving anyway. That'll do for now. It's all in, so obviously we got arch liner to put in but we're not going to bother with that until I got one so it's time to put the new wheels on for now Well, it's got Brembo pads, which ain't too bad, to be honest. So I'm just gonna clean up this disc and keep these pads, and clean up this caliper and change the color back. I will probably put them red, but I'm not doing any of that yet. I just wanna, like I said, get this car moving for now.
as you can see from this side is out of wallop as well it's damaged all the mud guard it's all split on this side so we know that's gone and needs to be replaced all down there is fine everything looks i would say reasonably straight down here you can't see any signs of contact it all looks even that looks straight i gotta be honest i don't think any of this is damaged i think it's all up on the wing and when the bumper got hit it's damaged the, the mud guard i don't know what's caused this damage but it's a case of taking the wings off you got a headlight bracket that broke so we really need to take this bumper off to have a good look underneath this off at the end of the tray looks fine get this uh, other side of this mud gut off and put the wheel on for now i think uh it's good progress obviously this side is purple as well why they paint painted purple or pink whatever for support i suppose they're not too bad these brakes really but i am going to change the pads and discs because they are got a bit of a lip on these so the front they're definitely getting done the back are fine uh, i can't see no leaks there's a little bit of oil coming from the top of the engine that's nothing to worry about. I think that's just from where the, the cover on the chain. So we just got to take this off now. Tell me what you think of them wheels. Granted, they're not black, but they got really better than what uh, the other ones were. At least the, 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 the wheels are straight. Let me know what you think. As you can see now, that wheel is nice and centre. Just looks so much better already. So we are well on our way with this build. Now we can move it about. It'll be so much easier to work on. I do want to give it a good clean before I do anything else to it really. So we got the wings to repair, bumper to repair, take all our front end off. There's quite a lot left to do. And we haven't even worked in the inside or the engine yet. But at least the car moves. So I'm well happy with that. And to be honest, them wheels don't look that bad. So where are we with this build so far? I've brought everything down that we've done and spent so far. All them suspension components, the outer track rod, tie rod, inner and outer, however you want to say it, and lower arm. They were all brand new parts and came to 100 pound, which is a lot, but they are more or less genuine parts there. So it is expensive, but I wanted to make sure that the, I didn't want to buy second hand for them. I hate buying second hand of suspension parts because at the end of the day, you've got rubber bushes on them and ball joints and you just buy in and they potentially won't last. So I wanted something, you know, it's been done properly and it's going to last a good while. So that's how much we spent so far and obviously my time, which I don't take into consideration only because this isn't um, a job for me. This is just a little hobby and something I do on a Sunday and a Saturday weekend or whenever I get a chance after work. So what do you think of them wheels? I gotta be honest, they make a massive difference to the car and it's gonna make um, a big difference when driving it to have the original wheels put back on it. Now it's drivable, I can move it around so the next thing is you're gonna have to give it a good clean and try and order some parts. I've already got a few things we're gonna need. We're gonna need arch liners. Um, a bumper is like gold dust at the moment. I'm in two mines with these doors. Gonna need some sort of paint and two wings. 
I'm gonna get a repair kit for the headlights, but it looks like the brackets are all the headlights in place are damaged. So, and it looks like this has definitely been sprayed before. So it'd be interesting to see what's lying underneath these panels. But fingers crossed, there's nothing too major and we can just replace parts. I don't really want to use um, pattern parts, but I will if I have to, because I can't find uh, or source genuine parts at the moment. So it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, you think a 2012 Polo, you'd be able to find loads of parts, but the R-Line bumper itself, it's really difficult to come across. There'll be a project, um, a video coming out shortly. I don't know when, because I'm still in the process of doing the Audi S1 clutch, but that'll be coming out as well, if and when I get time. So that is it for now. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to uh, like the video and comment below what you think of the car and how far we've come. Hopefully it'll still be one of the cheapest polos around once it's finished, fingers crossed. Don't forget to follow me on uh, reviving underscore salvage on Instagram, where I do post a daily a uh, little updates of what I'm going to have to. That is it for now, and I'll see you all in a bit.